Hello and welcome to Claire's World. I am Claire and today I would like to share with you more the information I received from the 25th dimension during my last VQH hypnosis session. I'll be reading from a transcript of the session and when I refer to Lorraine, I'm speaking to my practitioner who's asking me questions I've prepared in advance of the session. And when I refer to me, I'm referring to myself under hypnosis, which means that the answers are coming from the 25th. Now, before I start reading, as always, I'd like to thank you for subscribing to my channel, liking and commenting on this video. I really appreciate it. All right, here we go. Lorraine, you said the source has created other things besides the 25th dimension. But if we are one with source, then we are one with everything that source has created. So how come we don't feel, you said, we don't even know what all source has created? Every other being and reality the source has created, like angels and other entities we don't even know about. And aren't we affecting them and then affecting us with our energy and experiences? Me. Yes, so we are all one. And what that means is that we are source. And so therefore, yes, we feel everything. And therefore, we know everything that's going on. When we say that, when we have said that we, for example, in the 25th, we don't even know what other things source has created, it's not because there is a separation between us and the other things. It's that it's because we're focused on ourselves and the matrix. And again, we are implying separation, of course, when we say in the 25th, we are focused on this. Of course, we have said, depending on what perspective you use to look at things, you are aware of different things. So again, at the level of energy, we are all one. So of course, there is no separation between anything, okay? So not only between us and source, but also between us and everything else that exists outside of our conscious knowledge. At the same time, as the 25th, now we are focusing, consciously focusing on us. We are focused on our own existence. And specifically, we're focused on the fact that we are playing these games. So we are not aware of a lot of other stuff, or we are not consciously aware or focused on a lot of the other stuff that's happening. But of course, even with that, we are one. We are made of the same energy. Energy is indivisible. So we already said, for example, the reason we are aware of angels is because there are angels within the matrix that come to play with us, even though they play differently from us, but they play with us. And if we wanted to be aware of other things, we could be. There is no picket fence that separates us in that way. So yes, we could be. And now, do we affect the all? So we are all affected? Yes, of course. But now we are saying, you know, what was implied in the question is, oh, all these things we are doing now, are they affecting everything? Of course, they're affecting everything because it's like saying your right arm is doing something. Of course, it's affecting the rest of your body. But I can flap my right hand and my left leg is not moving. Do you see? So what perspective are you using when you say we're affecting everything? Yeah, we are all one. My right hand and my left leg are one part of the whole. But my right hand can be very separate, can be very independent on my left leg as well. The only time that they would be completely affected is say that there was a problem, you know, at the whole level. Something to say that something is going wrong and all of a sudden it's affecting my entire body. So yes, we can, we do. Of course, we all feel each other. So if they wanted to focus on feeling that part of the energy that's changing because of what we're doing now, yes, this is available and able to be felt. It is happening. But I mean, we're not affecting others as in their vibration is changing because of what we're doing. It's almost like, again, every different area is acting independently in that sense. But again, we are all one. So we do feel each other. We do affect each other at a very basic level. Lorraine, thank you. Do animals also have a team of the light and dark, considering that they have no veil? How come so many more essences want to incarnate as animals versus humans? Is this an agreement between essences to maintain a certain balance in type of reality on planets? Me. Yeah, so we'll start from the second part of the question. We already briefly alluded to this earlier. And yes, there are many more animals than humans, and they have a lot of NPCs as well. But basically, in general, yes, there are more SSS that want to come within the matrix and want to basically have no veil, and therefore they incarnate and want to play as the animals, as nature, and so on. Now, does the team that incarnates as animals, do they have a team of the light and a team of the dark? They don't in terms of what we think of when we split ourselves up. But the question, what the question is, to really get into what Claire wanted to know is, 
Are there what we consider evil animals since they have no veil? And because they have no veil, they don't have that structure. Like we think of it, again, team of the light or team of the dark. But what they do have is they also want to have different experiences. And many of these experiences are dark. And so a lot of animals might be what you consider dark. So if an animal wants to experience mercilessness or ripping another animal apart, they will do that. They have no veil. They know what they're doing. But this will still happen. So that's what Claire was trying to figure out. I mean, are they all innocent in terms of what we consider innocent? They all want to do good things. We are the only evil ones as humans. No, the animals also have different personalities. First of all, we already know the NPC, the body has different personalities, but the animals also have different personalities and essences might want to try out or leverage a certain personality type. You know, that's why they might pick that particular NPC to try out certain things. So yeah, I mean, these battles between animals happen all the time and not because there is a good guy and a bad guy, but because they also have, they want to play the game is what it is. So they also want these experiences of being aggressive or being a victim or whatever. Basically the same games that we play. The difference is that they know they're playing a game. Whereas we take everything, you know, we're always pretending and no, it's not us. This is how it is. I'm really good. I'm really, really good. And you, mm, not so much. You're a little bit shifty. <laughs> and they were laughing here. You know, that kind of game. Lorraine, thank you. Okay. We like to believe that when we have a particular affinity for a foreign country, it's because we have spent a past lifetime there. But we know there are no past lifetimes in that sense. So where does this affinity come from? For example, why does Clea love Thailand so much? Me. Yes. So again, yes, there are no past lives. And these affinities, what we consider affinities, is really the energy, whatever energy is more prominent. And again, it sounds like it's coming from the outside, but it's never coming from the outside. You know, it's the essences that create the energy and bring the energy. And so, yeah, whatever energy you may be attracted, basically, this is what you're attracted to, is the energy, the way that the vibration and so we like to think it's because, oh, clearly I had a past life here. So I recognize these things. Like, for example, Claire is obsessed with Japan and, and they were laughing here. We were about to say, and she might think that she's had previous lives there. And we're actually telling her she's had a few lifetimes in Japan. But it's not about you recognizing things. But it's you being comfortable with certain types of things, of certain vibrations. We call that culture. We think it's because of the way that things show up. But it's also things that appeal to us. But it's mostly about the energy because we already said every country has a different path, a different energy that they want to experience, different things that they want to experience. And so, yeah, that's what it is. It's not because necessarily you have had lifetimes there or whatever. There are even children that are born speaking a foreign language that they have no business knowing. And again, we already said you can pick anything out of the ether and bring it in. But so, of course, the explanation we give here is that they had a previous life in that other place. And that might have been the case. Doesn't have to be the case, though. But then all of a sudden, you grow up thinking, oh, because I speak this language, I must have had a previous life in that place, so I'm going to move to that place. You see, what are you actually doing? What you're actually doing is that you're attracted to this energy. You are aligning with this energy, and you wanted to move there. So this is an easy way. It's just a fun way to set up for yourself. Because what do we do here? It doesn't break the game. We just think, Oh, look, a curiosity, a little kid who's born already knowing the language of another country that is never heard. He's never heard this language. How does he know it? We allow this because we assume that it's okay within 3D without breaking the game. Kids are, it's very much an accepted concept almost everywhere on the planet that we reincarnate. And so of course, kids, they still haven't forgotten their previous life. So that's what it is. We already know there is no previous life. There are no previous lives per se, the way we think of them. Of course, there are previous, we've had previous incarnations, but when we draw on them, we think I'm having a dream about a previous life or having the experience that I was a nun or a soldier or in a previous life, whatever it is. But it doesn't mean that you necessarily were. It just means that's the memory you need to have for you to be spurred to believe X, Y, Z because that's what your higher self is trying to bring to you, X, Y, Z. And if your higher self has to bring it to you to where you think, oh, this is right. I'm supposed to be with this woman because this is the woman that I loved, you know, in three of my past lives, that's okay. Whatever the reason is that you need to 
whatever excuse you need to create for yourself so that you end up aligning what you need to do, that's okay. It doesn't really matter, right? It's preference. It can be anything. And so that's what we mean by it's alignment at the end of the day. Now, you might have had experiences in that country. We're not saying, again, in Claire's case, she's had some lives there. But we have incarnated here so many times and we've kind of been all over the place. We've been everywhere pretty much and we're laughing. So really all of us. So should we be remembering all our past experiences everywhere? Should we be attached to every country basically? No, what comes up is always what comes up for any of us at any particular time is whatever is relevant for us to remember at that particular time for whatever purpose their higher self has in that particular time. Lorraine, thank you. Is there any area of life on this planet that has not been set up or completely infiltrated by the dark? Is there something set up by the light that is still of the light? Me. No, not really. Nope. We already said even New Age spirituality was actually created by the dark. So you would think, you know, when you think that something that would be of the light, you would think, well, you know, there are a lot of spiritual people. And of course, there are spiritual people of the light, of course. But no, even New Age spirituality was created by the dark. In fact, if you notice, I mean, this has been the pattern. Every time we have to find a way to believe all together, meaning that so you're not going off on your own, actually opening up to everything that might be, but you still need to be channeled. Every time you're being channeled into something that everybody equally believes, even though these are just ideas, is something that's been manipulated, if not outright created by the dark. And so everything that affects your life from how you live, basically, how you survive, how your house works, how utilities work, how food works, how work works, jobs work or businesses work, how laws work, how medicine works, everything has been set up by the dark. If something was set up with a good intention that was quickly done away with, very, very quickly. So now there's really nothing left. Even our spirituality has been manipulated, infiltrated, really created. The way we're supposed to think about spirituality is being created by the dark. How we distribute information is controlled by the dark. I mean, look at us. We're doing this over Zoom. And then Claire is going to create videos on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, do you see? And they were laughing. Which doesn't mean we're not capable of being of the light within the system. But this is what it means when we live in a world that's being set up by the dark. And that's what we mean when we say we don't want to take this down and rebuild it. We would have to start from scratch. We'd have to turn this into a desert and start from scratch because even our houses are not acceptable. Our houses are toxic in many ways. We would never, if this had been a creation of the light, we would have never created them this way. We would not be slaves to our houses. We certainly would not be using this type of electricity we use or gas or whatever it is. So many technologies have been banned or destroyed or hidden and the inventors, you know, a minimum were threatened or killed altogether to hide these technologies. We'd be in a completely different environment if they had been set up by the light. Lorraine, thank you. This is a question from Carolyn. She says, I had a continuation of a dream I've been having. This one was different as I was shown the beginning of the end. I say beginning because I feel there was no completion. And part of a team saving the world. Up until now, it has only been the work towards the event in the other dreams. This time, we are in the midst of saving ourselves from an unknown entity. But prior to that, we were able to witness multiple essences leave. I awoke with a knowing that I was assessing every building to ensure everyone got out and was safe. Can you please comment on this dream? Me. Yeah, so this dream shows Carolyn the takedown has happened, meaning not the takedown of the planet. Clearly, we're still here, but everything else has happened. Now, she being one of the 12,000, she was very, her role was fundamental, obviously, in terms of this takedown. So she's done a lot of work to prepare for it. That's why she was making sure everybody was out, everybody was gone, and everybody is gone. And so when she says, we are now saving ourselves, what she's saying is that now we can focus on ourselves. We are focusing on ourselves, and we are setting ourselves up for better. That's what she means by saving ourselves. And from this darkness, she's reflecting basically the fact that, yes, we have done away with the darkness. We already said the darkness pretty much no longer exists here. We're only keeping, and our brothers and sisters on the team of the dark, some of them have decided to help us with this project, only keeping a semblance of it, but really, we're done away with it. So yes, we're saving ourselves from the dark. We already have. We already rebalanced everything. 
And so, yeah, she's been having these dreams where we've shown her where we were in the work that we're doing and the work we have been doing. We know this. We've been working on the takedown until a few months ago. And now we're working on rebalancing, saving ourselves, meaning that we are actually improving our experience here. We're actually having fun now with what we're doing. I know that doesn't quite match the reality the way we sense it at 3D level when we are awake. But that's what she is envisioning. That's what she's dreaming of. What she's seeing is actually what's happening behind the scenes. The reason she's checking on everybody to be sure they're gone is because they are gone. And because she's one of the 12,000, she's going to be, and we knew this from the beginning, we said this from the beginning, we were going to be the last to leave. So she's still going house to house to say, okay, has everybody else left? Yes, they have left. This is why she's not finding people. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care, bye-bye.